Hello everybody and welcome to another Eigenverse tutorial. Today I thought I'd go over some of my proceduralism techniques and I'm going to use some low poly rocks as some examples. So let's go ahead and drop down a geo node. Delete that file and they're gonna drop down a circle. So with circles, there's a lot of things to keep in mind. First of all, you're gonna to want to set this to be polygons and then I'm going to set it to be the ZX plane. So if we visualize this, there's a couple things to keep in mind with this. Right now it's closed. You can't have it be open as a circle or closed. For right now, I'm going to poly extrude it. So I'm going to want to have this as closed. The other thing to keep in mind with this, if I display the normals, they're currently going down. And most of the times I actually don't want that. I want them to be facing up and I want to extrude up. So usually when I add a circle, I go ahead and add a fuse in case I am using just the uh, curve and then I'm also going to throw in a reverse to reverse those normals so they're facing upwards. Okay, so after I'm gonna put on the reverse, I'm going to go ahead and do a point jitter. And then after this point jitter, you see it's at, uh, scaling one, one, one on the X, Y, Z. So instead I'm actually going to zero it out on the Y. Let's reset the scale back to 0.25, looks good. So then after that, you're going to do a poly extrude. Then we can do this distance up, raise it up a little bit. So now we're getting this circle with a um, raised edge, but you can see right now it does not have a back face. So there's gonna be an option right here that says output back, and you're gonna to wanna to have that checked here. Keep in mind if you're already, if you, this isn't always going to be the situation where you're gonna to wanna to output back, it's going to depend on the situation, but keep in mind that that might mess up your topology. So then after that, we're going to do another poly extrude. And I'm going to go up to this group, select this top face, and then I'm going to go ahead and inset it a little bit, and then also raise it up. The thing I'm trying to go for is a sort of flat stepping stone rock. So let's go ahead and do what we did before in the low poly to go ahead and do a normal and a poly bevel before that normal. So we can go ahead and get a look at what we're looking at. Set that to three. Maybe do this as a crease. Do a little bit. So that's that's good. So for right now, this is a very simple stepping stone rock or, or whatever. But you might not want this. You might want some subtle variations. And you want to be able to have, say, 10 rocks or even 100 if, say, you're crazy. So this is actually where Houdini really excels at, is taking some of these and you can make them parameters and change them sort of whenever you want. So to begin with, I'm going to go ahead and create a null, and then I'm gonna go up to this gear and do edit parameter interface. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to change is the seed of the, that point jitter. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a float, hit this right arrow down there. Let's name this seed. This is seed as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click here and do copy parameter. And then I'm going to go to this point jitter and where it's seed, I'm going to right click one just in case and paste relative references. So now it's referencing what's inside this null. So when I change the seed, you can see it's actually changing the seed of the point jitter. So that already gives you a lot of control. Let's add another one um, to this parameter interface. I'm gonna to want to change the number of divisions of the circle. So once again, that's another float and I'll just do divs here. And then I'm going to, once again, right click, copy parameter, paste in this divisions. And then we can change that to be there. I think we're going to want to manually just type that in depending on how many, many you want. Um, another thing I'm, I've been doing that I might have not covered is how to scrub through things. You can either do the slider or you can middle mouse click and it gives you this nice thing of intervals of 0 0.1, 110. So if you want to scrub through this and you don't all want those points because it doesn't make sense, you can go ahead and scroll over that one to change that. So this is a pretty simple rock. It's not too exciting right now, but it's at least giving us a start to uh, this sort of procedural mentality. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create another geo node. Hide that. Once again, delete the file. I'm going to drop down a platonic solid. And in this case, I'm going to want a uh, icosahedron. 
And then after that, I'm going to do a Voronoi fracture. So right now that's telling me what I need here is some points for the Voronoi cells. So we're gonna do something similar to last time. I'm gonna use a slightly different method just to show you how many ways there are to do this. I'm going to do a um, VDB from polygons. And then I'm gonna turn this into a fog VDB. So we go ahead and see this, it's taking that shape. And then we're gonna scatter this. So what these points for the scatter is gonna be is not actually putting points on here. We're gonna use this as points for the fracture. It has some sort of algorithm. It's gonna do some math to sort of fracture between those points. So if we have a thousand, it's gonna be pretty crazy and then the computer might crash. So let's try 50 and see sort of what it gets from there. So you can see it has those cracks. So um, it's going, it's fracturing that right now. One thing you can do to sort of get a view of this of what it's doing is type in exploded view and you can actually see each little piece right there. Um, so that's already kind of cool. And what we're gonna wanna do to make this really procedural is we're gonna wanna select one of these and we can change which one we wanna select. But say we like that middle guy in there, we're gonna wanna be able to select that middle guy. So in here, we're going to go to cluster and then there's this option here for cluster pieces. And uh, what that does is if we look in the geometry spreadsheet and then go to the um, primitive, and then we look here and there's this name and it says piece zero, piece one. So it's actually grouping all of them to show which piece is which. So then we can go ahead and delete this exploded view and then do a delete. And we're going to do at name equals piece and then say one. So right now that's deleting just that one piece. So let's go ahead and say delete non-selected so that we can go ahead and delete all the rest of them. So we can scrub through this and see it's getting a bunch of neat little shapes and we're getting some of them that are, you know, a bit more rock-like or pebble-like and then there's some other ones that are that really interesting, almost crystalline structure, like a geode. Um, it all depends on what you want and there's a lot of ways you can control how that sort of looks, but you're generally gonna get something that shape. So right now, as you can see, when we're scrolling through this, they're all over the place. And that's not really helpful. We're gonna actually want them to um, stay in the center so that way we can change it and it won't, we won't have to uh, manually move it over the middle because that would be ridiculous. So what we're gonna do is have a transform and then we're gonna use a really neat handy dandy little uh, expression. We're gonna do $CEX for this one. And then that's going to move it back over to each, the orange on each of those. And I think I'm actually going to want the negative of this. Right now it's just doubling it. So let's go ahead and fix that and say we want the opposite of what it's moved off the origin. Okay, so that's how we want it. Now when we look and scrub through these different pieces, they're all staying nice and center, which is exactly what we wanted. So first of all, real quick, we can do what we are doing before to uh, get that nice little shape that we might want. Just real quick. Fix that. So before I created a, no a null node and then copied the parameters. So I'm going to show you a different method of doing, doing this, and this is a little bit easier and it allows for an easier creating of a digital asset, which I might show you a bit later. So what I'm going to do is actually take these and then I'm going to create a subnet. So that collapsed all those functions into a subnet, which one makes it easy to organize everything. And the other thing you can do now is edit the parameter interface for this. And then you're gonna dive into here and then you're gonna go ahead and take whatever uh, parameters you're gonna to want to manipulate. So let's go ahead and take the seed from this, um, the global seed value, and you're gonna just go ahead and drag that right over there and it names it for you and everything. So since it's that easy, let's go ahead and, you know, we can do that, how much bevel we want, the shape, you, you know, go wild, just keep in mind, you know, it's, this is entirely for you as the, um, who makes the art. It's just sort of to make your job easier. Or in some cases, if you're handing it off to somebody, you're gonna really wanna make sure you have all your names right, and it's gonna be easy for them. So I went uh, accept and apply. So now when you look at this subnet, you can go ahead and just change uh, 
the global seed and you can just scrub through these. So even somebody who knows nothing about art can say, oh, I want a different one here. And then, you know, I want to change all of these offsets. I think I mistakenly named a couple things weird. Okay, so everyone, thanks so much for watching. I'm, I'm hope you sort of got the bit of the mentality of the Houdini where it's not about making one thing, it's about making a huge variety of things at one click of uh, your mouse. And I will be, I should be back pretty soon with another tutorial and I'll be doing something a bit more exciting than just creating rocks, but I'm going to use the same sort of things I've been doing this to show what you can do to create a some really neat VFX.